In this video, I'm going to show you how to create realistic looking clothing mock-ups with your designs on them. And this is actually a follow-up video from my recent mid-journey mock-up tutorial where I showed you how to generate mock-up images, but not how to place the designs on them. If you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend you check it out because it's going to make your life a lot easier. So here we are inside of Photoshop. You can alternatively follow along with Photopea. I don't think all of the steps are possible with Photopea, but most of them are. And one thing to note here is that this is an AI generated mock-up. And if you've done the same, you will need to upscale your mock-ups before importing them into Photoshop. So I would recommend either dgb.lol or upscale because those are both free and you can upscale the images very easily to 4x the, the original resolution, which is what I did in this case. And if you want to follow along exactly with this same mock-up, I will also leave a free download link in the description to this mock-up and some more. Next up, you'll have to drag and drop your design file into this Photoshop document. So it opens up right here in front of your product. Then you'll need to resize the design and make it sort of aligned with the top half of your sweatshirt, a t-shirt, whatever um, product you make this mock-up for. And in this case, I'm trying to sort of align the yellow circle or the center of the yellow circle with the center of this crew neck right here. So there we go. I think that's about right. Right. And then uh, once you're happy with the placement, just uh, go ahead and click this check mark to place the design. Next up, whilst having the design selected, you will want to head over to filter and select liquify. And one quick note here, you don't have to do this step. I would say it's optional. Um, this essentially warps the design a little bit to make it fit the creases in the sweatshirt. And I don't know if Photopea has a liquify option. So if it doesn't, don't worry, you don't necessarily need to do this step. So click on liquify right here and a new window will open up. You can hold down Alt and then scroll to zoom into your design. So we want to be quite close to this and you can also hold down space and then click and drag to readjust um, what part of your image you're viewing. So um, a quick tip over here uh, where it says use all layers, we want to change that to background. And now if you play around with the opacity, as you can see, uh, it sort of hides your design. And at the same time, you can see uh, the creases very well. So you want to change this to about five or seven, something in that range. And now we can use this brush right here to warp our design. And I would recommend making the brush quite large to sort of fit um, the size of your creases right here. So for me, that's about 250 right here. And now where you see the dark creases, you will essentially want to click and then drag down and to the right. That's sort of the pattern that I've gone with. So um, the edge of the design right here, I'll go down and to the right a bit and same over here. Let's check the top. Top looks fine. There's quite a, quite a dark sort of crease right here um, that we could also adjust. So drag this down into the right um, for this entire crease. There's quite a bit here. So do that as well. Now I wouldn't do too much because um, you will notice afterwards if you do too much of this warping, it does easily look very, very horrible. So don't go overboard with it. And uh, next up for these light areas, I'm going to increase the brush because there is more sort of highlights and I'm going to do uh, the reverse essentially. So I'm going to uh, drag these up and to the left. Same with this tail at the edge. I'll make that quite big, Just sort of push that in in one go. And uh, let's do that here as well. Um, there we go, just push that up a little bit. And I think that's enough. You don't you don't have to do it for every little highlight or shadow you see, just add a bit of that effect. And I think if we make this opacity a bit higher, I think this leg looks a bit fat now. So I think I will go back in, push this up a little bit like so. And there we go. Then once you're done, hit OK and you will see the effect apply right here. So uh, this is the before and this is the after. It adds a bit of realism, but it's not necessary. The, the most of the realism, it comes in the next step, which is actually sort of decreasing uh, the dark bits and making or putting more emphasis onto the highlights. So in order to do that, you will need to sort of unlock your background layer right here and then duplicate that up by holding down Alt clicking on the layer and dragging it above your design. So now what we can do is we can create a clipping mask. If you go in between these two layers right here and hold down Alt on your keyboard, you will see this little arrow up here. And if you left click onto this arrow, it will create a clipping mask, meaning now this t-shirt or the sweatshirt background only applies to our design. Next up, we want to change the blend mode of this background layer right here. 
to hard light. And then we can use the curves function, um, which you can find over here in image adjustments curve, or you can also click control M while actually having that background layer selected. And with these curves, we're going to do all the magic now. So um, you've got these two sliders at the bottom, which you want to play around with first. If we um, sort of play with the dark slider on the left-hand side, you can see that our design disappears. We don't really want that. So there's already enough um, dark depth right here for these uh, creases. Um, what we want to do instead then is move the bright side of this slider downwards. So as you can see now, the highlights are getting brighter whilst these dark bits are still staying dark, which is ideal. That's exactly what we want. And um, you don't want to go too far down because then it's going to be sort of overexposed, but you want to find the sweet spot where you've got quite a bit of shadow, but also quite a bit of highlight to give your design depth. You can also alternatively um, play around and actually click on this uh, dot right here and drag the dark bits up to sort of decrease how much darkness you have. I don't think that's necessary here. And same goes for this. For this point at the top, you could drag it down to once again, mess around with the brightness. Um, so you've got the options to play around with these. Depending on the background color of your t-shirt, you will see completely different graphs right here, but you will quickly find um, a sweet spot. Um, you don't want to go too far where there's literally black shining through, um, but you want to have quite a contrast. So click OK once you're done, and then we can hide this layer to see the before and the after. As you can see, that actually has a massive effect. So hide this, view it again. There we go. Very, very realistic. And now if we, even if we turn off the liquify effect at the bottom, I think this still looks extremely realistic. So you have to decide there for yourself whether you want to play around with liquify for some extra warping or not. And lastly, one more step that I like to take um, to make this slightly more realistic is actually selecting the design layer and turning the opacity down to 90% because that way we get a bit of the background color shining through and the design looks a little bit more faded, which is once again, more realistic. Usually the colors don't turn out extremely bright. So here's the before, there's the after. And also if you have quite a textured mock-up, um, then you will get some of the texture of the product shining through your design, which is really handy. And that is it. Um, fairly easy process. Once you've got it down, um, done it one or two times, it's really, really quick. You can do it for different clothing mock-ups and you can also try it for wall art as well.